Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis and we have something new here to show you this afternoon. It is the IdeaFly F210. It's a ready to fly 5.8 gigahertz FPV racer. Super fast on 2204 motors. It has these DJI 20 amp ESCs on here. That's what it says in the specs anyway. Also, it has a flight controller. Uh, it has an F3 SP Racing on here as well. So very nice that it does include an F3 on here. Most of the guys that are racing like to be able to use those because they're highly tunable in clean flight. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the box real quick and I'll show you what's included with your case and the accessories that come with it. Now one thing I always tell people to do is test your fail safe on the bench with the props off real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and arm that and I'm gonna go ahead and switch into a different mode and cut the transmitter off and we're good to go, the motor stopped, so our fail safe is working. So let's go out to the field and do a flight test real quick for you guys. Okay guys, here we go. We're gonna do the flight demo, the IdeaFly F210. Nice relative size quadcopter to the racing community right now. So let's go ahead and set it down and give it a flight test. And we'll show you some of these modes on here. I'm gonna show you after we get back in the studio too, uh, some of the mods that I did to it right out of the box. Just a few pointers and a few tips for you guys that are just getting this and seeing it for the first time. Some of the things you might not catch um, if, if you hadn't seen this otherwise on the video. So hopefully some of those extra tips do help you out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set down the quad now and I'm gonna start my Fat Sharks recording so you guys can see a little flight footage there. And so now I'm recording on the Fat Sharks. I'm gonna set those to the side. You want to always set your goggles away from the sun you don't want any sun glare producing spots on your lenses. So tip for you new guys, keep your goggles out of the sun. Now I'm going to go ahead and arm it and take off. And I did use a, a position switch on the left here. I set that up for an arm switch all the way on the left. So now I can go ahead and take off. And so right now I'm in angle mode. And this gives me stability. And I do have the rate set to 70, 70, 70. So I have quite a bit of maneuverability. If you're a new guy, leave those rates at zero. I'm going to show you that in clean flight after this flight test. So if this is your first quadcopter, I'm going to show you just a few things in clean flight that'll make your life a little easier. This is a really agile quad right out of the box though, look at that. Definitely true characteristics of a race quad. And see it's not letting me do any flips, even on full stick, pushing all the way to the right or left. So it won't let me do flips here, see where it's stopping me? So that's pretty cool. Now I can go into horizon mode, and horizon will allow me to do a flip but will still give me some stabilization after I flip. So it's kind of like acro mode with training wheels. So it's really pretty easy to fly in horizon mode. I had a friend of mine who was trying to fly some freestyle maneuvers and he was flying in horizon mode and he just said, you know, I just feel like I'm being held back all the time. And I set up acro for him for full rate. He flew that for the first time and was amazed. An acro rate, rate mode, if you're not familiar with it, that's going to let you fly with no stabilization at all. Most of the pros fly that with these race quads. But this one has a really nice flight characteristics, really fast and nimble and capable. I, I would keep this in my personal quiver if I didn't have so many. Those white props on the front make it really nice for line of sight flying. Motor guards on the outside. Let's do, let's do a punch out real quick in horizon mode. Ready? One, two, three. That's not bad. And we're on 3S, you guys. So 3S is what most of you new guys should start out on. Start out on 3S and move your way up to 4. When I fly on 3S, it really feels relaxing not quite as intense as 4S can be. So 4S really pumps up the power in your power to weight ratio. It makes the quad a lot faster. 
but you also have you know more possibility for heavier crashes and a lot more throttle so let's go ahead and let's play around with that uh, barometer mode I'm gonna get in kind of close in case it crashes so now I'm in barometer mode and this should help me maintain my altitude a little bit and keep it nice and level that seems to be working okay I don't really trust this mode all that much and I'm going to go ahead and flip out of that not my favorite mode and it comes set up with that mode you can leave it on there if you want I'll probably de deactivate barometer uh, on mine because I really don't use it a nice quad very nice quad 22 of force with that TBS antenna on the back of there is nice TBS Triumph guys really really nice prop uh, excuse me nice antennas antennas are super durable and they give you a great video coming back to your goggles or your monitor it's like we have somebody taking a nap over there on the other side of the field I don't want to get too close to that guy it's oscillating a little bit in the wind you know I think this it needs a little pit tuning uh, but I was kind of going slow and I'm also in the first mode which is angle mode right now so I'll switch into horizon and that'll let me fly a little faster without so much oscillation a very nice flying quad one of the nicer ones I've flown this week really but it is the beginning of the week you guys so we'll see what comes in by the end of the week by Friday this is probably one of the better idea fly copters that I've flown I do really like the uh, 200 size 200 class a little bit smaller than the 250 and I feel like the power to rate ratio is better you can fly it in smaller spaces too you don't need quite as much room doing any close proximity racing it'll definitely help you have a 200 size or a 180 those seem to be the popular sizes right now I really do like the, the quad it's it's pretty decent there go some birds don't hit the birds look like some uh, pigeons flying around here not a whole lot of action out of the field today there's nobody really out here so that's kind of nice but a good looking quad in the air and I did move the antennas on the, the quad I moved them back so I can put my Mobius or my run cam 2 on the top without having my antennas interfering with the, the camera so that's about it for this flight review let's go back in the studio and let's talk about some of the settings in clean flight and let's talk about some of the I guess the shortcomings of this quad and maybe how to make up for them uh, well, you know we're just talking about the antenna and a few other things on here there's some VTX mod that you want to do but it's very minor so we'll go ahead and land this one for you and we'll go back inside and we'll do a little bit of uh, bench talk thanks for hanging out for that flight test that was a lot of fun you guys so I want to go ahead and tell you some tips about this IdeaFly F210. Like I said, it is a really sleek looking body and I really do like the way this is built. Um, I like this unibody frame. A lot of these are pretty easy to deal with and work with. So uh, if you break an arm, it's pretty easy to replace that bottom plate. Now, one of the things that I did notice right away was that they had heat shrinked the video transmitter in the back here. And, and a lot of manufacturers have been doing this recently. I wish if they were going to do this that they would make sure that there's a hole exposed where the button is for changing our channels um, because it makes it very difficult for someone new 
to even know that it has a switchable uh, channel selector on here. So the button here, we're bringing it a little closer, is now exposed because what I did was I took the top off here, I removed the video transmitter, took the heat shrink off the old one and put new heat shrink on here and then I cut a hole here with a razor blade so that I could have access to that button. Very important when you're out in the field and you're racing with your friends that you can switch channels so um, they might want to take note of that. But overall the, the quad, it does look like a durable quad. The housing around the camera has plenty of uh, camera protection there. It's not hanging out the front like some racer quad design. So I feel pretty confident that this one will survive some good crashes. Now also, I removed their antennas back. They had them kind of sticking out the top holes here. Um, one of these two holes, I can't remember. But what that does, that's gonna prohibit you from putting your action cam on top. So now I have plenty of room for my action cam up here and my strap will run through uh, this hole here. Now I'll have plenty of real estate up there for whatever cam I want to put. I can prop that up a little bit with a little piece of foam where I can put a GoPro couch up here uh, for my GoPro Hero 3. So those are just a few things that I noticed right away. The next thing that I noticed was the hardware in here for your, your monitor, your FPV monitor, this little mounting plate on the very back. And you can mount it right there, but the problem is, is that the hardware that comes with this is made for a steel rail. Normally, we have transmitters with a little thin steel rail coming off the top, but this IdeaFly transmitter has a plastic rail, and it's really thick, and this is not going to fit on here. So. I don't have any way to mount up this monitor that they included with it. Um, if, if you have a way that, that you know works with this one and it's a quick solution, let me know in the comments down below because uh, right now I'm not sure how I'm going to mount this up. So for our flight test, I will have to uh, figure something out or just not use it. I'll probably record in my Fat Shark DVRs anyway. Um, so that's just a few tips for you guys. Uh, some things about the F210 right away that, that I came across. If I come across anything else, I'll be sure to, to share that with you. Uh, hopefully that, that helps you out with your setup if you're F210. Okay, so the first thing out of the box besides the quad is the transmitter. It is definitely a rebranded transmitter. It, I have seen these on other RTFs out there, but you know what? This one's just fine because you can program these switches on here, and you can add your own flight modes to these switches. You can add an arm switch over here, which I will show you how to do in clean flight. Uh, these switches over here on the right, you really don't need those. And any of the buttons down here for the, the manual computer programming with this radio, you don't have to do any of that. Uh, so it comes pre-programmed, pretty much ready to go uh, out of the box. You can fly it in the modes that it comes with. It comes in uh, horizon mode and barometer mode. So there's only two switch positions available here. And it comes with a right stick arming activated mode. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to use a switch because I think that's a little safer than using right and bottom corner to arm, uh, left bottom corner to disarm kind of it's dangerous because when you're flying you could accidentally hit that and disarm it uh, go to the left and disarm it there mid-flight so you don't want to do that so let me go ahead and show you the rest of the stuff that comes along with this um, it does come with some tri props in here they do feel feel pretty flexible as well as your standard style props and it looks like I get four white ones and two black ones. Why those numbers are there like that, I'm not sure. Um, we also get a standard 3S charger. It does come with that 1500 milliamp 30C battery on here. So you're gonna start out with 3S. I'm not 100% sure if they want you to run 4S on here, but most 20 amp ESCs are capable of that. Um, just not a real high ceiling on those 30, uh, 20 amp ESCs for, for 4S. So you, you wanna be careful that you don't blow up your ESCs. If you've heard of other guys on YouTube doing it on this particular copter, you can probably be safe to do it. Also, it comes with a USB cable here, which is really nice because I'm always looking for an extra USB cable to hook up to clean flight. And it hooks up right on the other side of your flight controller right here. Now next up we have mounting hardware that is for your FPV monitor that comes with it. 
the mounting hardware doesn't exactly hook up to the transmitter so I'm not 100% sure about this and I'll show you a little bit more about this in the video a little bit later but um, it's a it's around a three and a half inch screen it is suitable for beginner FPV if you're first learning to fly this in line of sight definitely recommend flying it in line of sight first in that uh, angle mode which I'm going to show you how to add and uh, using your FPV monitor so I'll set that down you also have some zip ties you have a 5.8 circular polarized antenna this is a really good antenna for signal and that one's set to go on your monitor this one goes on your quadcopter itself I would upgrade this to a circular polarized antenna by the way you have a video out cables if you decide to go to a bigger monitor and you have a DVD with instructions on here as well should be in English and that's pretty much it for the accessories. So I'll go ahead and load this up in clean flight and I'll show you the latest version of firmware on here for you. Um, so if you're new to this, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough real quick in clean flight. What is clean flight? Uh, it is the program that we use to configure the flight controller that's on this copter. It has a little USB port on the side. You plug it into the side of your laptop and into the side of the quad, into the flight controller directly. And then you open up this clean flight program. Now you're gonna need to download clean flight from the Google Chrome store so go to the web store and open this up inside Chrome uh, it should be also in standalone application once you connect to it it should auto load and connect if not hit the connect button up here and first screen you'll see is this introductory uh, setup screen so you have all your axes here you can check that left right forward and back are correct here and we can go down to the configuration screen next we don't have to mess around with this ports set uh, setting there because the transmitter and receiver are already set up now in your configuration um, everything looks pretty good in here it shows you what your serial receiver provider is it's PWM on here um, so we're doing that one wire per channel setup so you'll see a bunch of wires in there um, and you'll have uh, spectrum one 1024 selected here for that now you don't have motor stop and one shot on those ESC's they were the the DJI ESC's on there but they're they're capable of really ripping around um, so for your basic fail safe settings I have drop here set that means that if I lose signal it's gonna drop out of the air and disarm so I don't want this thing to fly away remembering the last throttle input value that it had say 75 percent and then it gets stuck and woo it goes flies away so we don't want that to happen so I tend to use drop um, just my my personal preference now over here you have your channel fallback settings auxiliary one is horizon and you have the uh, barometer mode there now I'm gonna go down to PID tuning next now all these rates here on this left hand side any of these numbers do not change these right away if you're not familiar with PID tuning please watch some videos and understand how to change these numbers you change them one at a time uh, over here on the roll and pitch and yaw rates these rates you can change up a little bit. They're set from the factory default to 000. And I went ahead and added 70 across the board on my setup just to make it roll a little faster. You can go from 0 to 100 on these settings. Uh, 25 being kind of mild, 50 about halfway, and 70% there, uh, 0.70 for a little faster roll pitch and yaw rate. Now I'll go down to the receiver setting. I'm gonna power up the quad real quick, so I'll turn on the transmitter first and then I'll turn on the quad. Now, I do have the props on and I always recommend that folks take the props off while you're playing around with your mode sweat settings because you will fire up the motors on the bench and you don't want this thing to hit something or hit you uh, because I was tightening the props earlier and I did kind of uh, slice one of my fingers a little bit on those props. They are pretty sharp. So, I'll check all my channel maps roll looks good pitch looks good y'all looks good my throttles good auxiliary one is where my modes are going to be and aux two is where we're going to put the arm switch so i'm going to go ahead now that i've checked all those that looks good over there with the dead band and the rc rate over here uh, we're going to leave the y'all expo at zero so we'll go to modes now and there is no arm setting here you can see that they have two settings here for the defaults. Uh, those are horizon and barometer mode. Now, when I switch down, you'll see that green move over here and it'll highlight here 
so that way I know it is the transmitter is on and it's activating those switches. Now the barometer is on the third position down, the horizon is number two, and then number one is essentially stabilization. So um, I'm believing they're using that as their angle mode. We'll go ahead and set that up manually and I add that just like I did there and I can test it uh, by saving here. Okay. And so now I have an angle mode in there as well. I'm not going to add ang ac acro on here uh, or air mode right now, but you can if you want to. So let's go ahead now and let's save that again just to make sure that we are definitely getting those modes. Okay. Now let's go down to the CLI and that's going to show you the settings on the flight controller. If you want to learn the setting, uh, the firmware version that's on your flight controller, down here at this bottom bar, type in version and hit return. Then it's going to show you Clean Flight SP Racing 1.130. That's June 6, 2016. So we have a really, really new firmware on this copter. This is really nice. So now everything is good on here. This is the way we're going to fly it uh, with these modes. And let's see, let me check my arm switch real quick. I didn't add an arm switch. I told you I was going to do that. So to add an arm switch, it's just like this. We want to set it on auxiliary two because we knew that was our arm switch. Okay. So I did that there. And now we need to move this green slider in the green when we're going to be armed and active. Um, we'll set it above this rate right here. So there we go in the green, we're active and then back that direction we are. So you didn't hear the quad spool up because I didn't save it yet, so I'll go ahead and save. And now when I turn the switch down to the position two switch, the throttle starts up at a minimum value. So um, like I said, guys, take your props off. Don't do like I did and leave them on, uh, but you will uh, definitely benefit from saving yourself any heartaches having your props on while you're, you're working in clean flight. So everything looks good here. I'm going to save that. And that's the settings that I'm going to fly it with for now. You can go in here and you can turn off this barometer setting. If you don't like that, you can go to the sensors tab down here and you can turn off barometer and magnometer if you want to um, here and here. And once you do that, you can take that barometer mode off by just going over to the right here and clicking this little X button and that'll take it off. But for now we're just leaving it there because that's the way we're going to fly it for now. But that's a basic overview of the IdeaFly F210. So hopefully that helped you guys. Uh, hopefully I didn't talk too fast. I have to make the video as short as possible because um, the more minutes I talk, the, the larger and more gigabytes we add up on this video for the upload. So thanks again for watching you guys. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, thanks again for watching that episode. Please do click subscribe so you can see all the newest drones coming out each week on the Drone Camps channel. We're going to show you tons of new stuff coming out in the drone industry. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.